Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, Professor of Organic Chemistry here at Romano Scientific, and I'm with Professor Louis Blois, mathematician today, who's going to go over a really solid problem to help you on the exam. All right, Professor Blois. Okay, let's take a look at these problems. These three are all related to each other in one way or another. Um, a number is randomly selected from the first positive 700 integers. Okay, question one. What is the probability that it is a multiple of nine? Okay, well, we ask how many multiples of 9 are there in the first 700 digits? Well, every ninth number is going to be a multiple of 9. It's going to be on the 9 times table. So let's see how many multiples of 9 there are by dividing 9 into 700. So it's 7 times 9 is 63, with a remainder of 7 carried down to 0. 9 goes into 70 again. 7 times 9 is 63, with a remainder of 7. So there are 77 multiples of 9 in the numbers between 1 and 700. So that means the probability, the probability is going to be 77 over 700. Or reducing that, dividing numerator and denominator by 7, we have 11 over 100, which is then 11%. All right, so very similar. Why not ask another question? What is the probability that it is a multiple of 7? Well, do we really need to have a, an explicit calculation? How many multiples of 7 are there between 1 and 700? If we divide 7 into 700, we get 100. So the probability here is going to be 100 over 700, which is 1 seventh. And if you happen to know that 1 seventh is 14 and 2 sevenths percent, more power to you. So this is 14 and 2 sevenths percent. Even, even if you know it's approximately 14 and 2 sevenths percent, the selection of answers will be close to what you uh, remember the value as. Let's go to this next uh, problem, which is very similar. The packages at a warehouse are numbered consecutively from 2014 to 2256. How many packages are in the warehouse? Well, this is sort of a standard formula. If there's a consecutive sequence of numbers, there's a, num there's a formula that will tell you how many numbers there are in that sequence. The last minus the first plus one. All right, so another formula you have to put into your memory bank. I have a more intuitive way of doing it. You can choose either way, either way that's comfortable for you. Here's what I like to do. Let's take the first number in the sequence, 214, 200, 2014, 2015, all the way up to 2256. And what I want to do is create a one-to-one -one correspondence between this sequence of numbers and the counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five. How would I do that? Well, how would I get 1 from the first number? I would subtract 2013 and get 1. I subtract 2013 from the second number, 2. I subtract 2013 from each of the sequence of numbers, and I get a correspondence between that and the ser series of counting numbers. So I'll subtract 2013 from the final number and get 243, and that's the number of uh, not digits in that sequence. It takes longer to explain than it does to do. If you're doing this on your own, you would know how to do it in a much more efficient way without the explanation. Okay, go. thank you, Professor Blois. Hope you enjoyed that video. That was a very, very sophisticated problem and sure to land on the data and the old exams. All right, good day to you. Bye-bye.